Alright, hello everyone. So today I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently. Normally I show you guys things pre-assembled and I just talk about them. Well, uh, I want to kind of get more into this and, and explore a little bit more about, uh, you know, the things we can do. And I want to show you guys how I actually assemble some things. Now in this video I'm going to be doing something cool. It's something that I've never built before um, and I'm quite excited about it. Uh, it's a 3D printed uh, moon rover. So what this is part of is this is part of three other robots, all 3D printed, uh, that I've designed and uh, that uh, you know we're going to be building um, on this uh, channel. So if you guys subscribe, um, I'm going to show you guys some more of uh, these different robots um, and how we put them together. And then uh, in the future, it's going to also be how we how we program them and how we make them move around. But for starters, we're just going to start with building them. Now I've already done the designs for these, and one of the things that I'm going to show you guys in the future is is how we actually go about uh, you know designing something like this. Um, so what you can see is most of the parts are 3D printed. They're all sitting around me. So these are our size bananas. So they're there for a size reference. I know my hands are in this picture, but banana is a great size reference. They're not part of the assembly at all. Um, and uh, yeah, so these are all of the different components and all these things are gonna make up a, a 3D printed rover. Uh, we only have one electronic component that we're gonna be assembling today. And then in another video, I'm gonna explain to you guys the electronics because it does get a bit complicated, especially if you're not used to dealing with motors and controllers and, and software. So uh, for the very first bit, uh, we have this. This is the internal frame of the, uh, of the rover. And this is actually a really cool part because it's mirrored. Uh, so it's the same piece. They're going to go together like this, uh, and everything is going to mount onto them. So one of the things that I've done is I've inserted uh, some of the bearings. I still have to put all the thermal inserts into these, so that's going to be a process. Um, so one of the things I want to tell you guys is, and you can see this too because I don't have the threaded inserts in these, but this video is going to be the first time that I assemble this robot. Um, so any mistakes that I've made in the design or anything like that, uh, you guys are going to you know, experience with me. Uh, hopefully it's nothing that stops this video. Hopefully I can keep going until we have an assembled robot. Um, uh, so yeah, so, so please, uh, please bear with me. So for the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the thermal inserts into this frame. Now what is a thermal insert? A thermal insert is, I've got one over here, um, it is, it's this little tiny, tiny thing. Maybe I can show a zoomed in video of it later, but um, it's essentially a little plastic piece that you can melt into these 3D printed, um, it, sorry, into 3D printing parts uh, that let you uh, essentially thread into the part. Now, you normally could just thread straight into this, but it's not very strong. So I like to use these things wherever possible, um, especially because if you, if you get lots of them, they're not, uh, uh, they're not too hard to assemble. Uh, it's you get good at it and it becomes a pretty quick process. Um, so that's what we're going to do first is we're going to stick all of the parts inside of there. Now how do we do that? How do we melt things into this? Well, we use a soldering iron. This soldering iron's uh, a pretty popular one these days. Uh, to be honest, I don't really understand the hype. Uh, it's when it comes to soldering, Weller still seems to be better, but uh, this thing works pretty well um, for doing this job. Uh, now you don't need something this fancy. You can just go to the electronics store near you or go online and find the cheapest soldering iron you can get and it's going to do the job here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our power supply, we're going to stick it in. I'm going to show you guys one of these um, and then uh, I'm going to kind of uh, fly through the rest uh, and probably show you guys uh, a bit of a time lapse of what that looks like. Uh, so first thing is I'm going to, this is set to a very high temperature, 200 degrees uh, is pretty good. You can't solder at 200 degrees but you can put these inserts in. Uh, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the insert on the end of the tip and then I'm going to uh, take the insert, where's a good one to put in, I'm going to do this one. So this is one of the motor mounts. And then so what you'll see is as I press on this insert, it might be hard to see in this video without being zoomed in, uh, you can see that that insert slowly goes inside of there. And now we have a very strong, uh, this little thing here, a very strong uh, threaded surface. Um, so now I'm going to get through the rest of them and uh, yeah, you guys are welcome to follow along, I'll speed up the video.
okay, so that is the inserting of all of these thermal inserts. So now they're all in there. Now we have threaded surfaces to actually bind things to, uh, which is really, really cool. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually start uh, assembling some things. So we're gonna start to put on uh, a lot of the different components that we have here. So one of the things I'm gonna do is as I'm assembling this, I'm gonna try and explain uh, some of the things um, that are, are going on here. Um, now, you're gonna have to excuse me because I have to go get some fasteners uh, and I will be back shortly. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna first assemble the first wheel assembly. Now, for those of you who have been following along on Instagram, this is something that you might have seen. So this is the wheel. Now what's happening inside of here? Now what you can see is we have a bearing here and a bearing here. And we have the same thing in here and that lets this wheel spin very nicely. Now typically this is something you can't do with 3D printing because 3D printed surfaces are so rough that if you just put a bolt through a hole, it's not gonna spin very nicely. And that's what we use bearings for. So bearings allow us to get a nice, um, very low friction fit. So one of the things we're gonna be doing is, and this is gonna expose itself as we build this design, is we want to have a design that has four wheel drive but only uses two motors. Now this means that we have to have some kind of motion transfer. In this case, this belt or these belts are going to be the tool we use for motion transfer. So how that works, and I'm gonna assemble this, is that we have a pulley here and this pulley turns. So you can see that if I turn this pulley, it also moves the wheel. And we're gonna see as we work down the chain uh, how that helps us. One of the things we have to be careful of, and this is a very, uh, very big mistake for new players that I make all the time, is we have to put on all the belts because uh, we need to make sure that they're going to be assembled correctly because as soon as we put the bolt through, we can't assemble uh, any more belts. So I just have to grab two washers. So the way that this is being assembled is that we are taking, first of all, uh, the bolt is going to be on the outside of this. So the very first thing to go in is our bolt. Then we need a washer. Washers are very important. Otherwise, uh, the 3D printed part is just going to rub on the other 3D printed part. So now we have our pulley and we can see this spins nicely. And then we have another washer that's going to go on it. Then we're going to put on this belt. Now this belt's just going to hang for now. And then we're going to put on our other belt. Now, as we can see, it doesn't go all the way on. So the way that we deal with this is we can take this part out, we can slide this down a little, we can put our belt on, and then with any luck, uh, we can insert this back. Oh, remember, this is my first time assembling, so sorry if there's any. Yeah, there we go. So now you can see we have a nice tight belt that's transferring motion down our system. But now we still have to assemble this to something. Now that's where these bearing positions, sorry, that's where these bearings come in on this design. Um, and that's what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this and uh, inserting it in here and putting a bolt on the other side. And that's gonna give us our front, uh, our front wheel. Um, so in order to assemble this, we're gonna be using a lock nut. Now the reason we use lock nuts is because we can't over tighten this or it's not gonna work. And we want to make sure that the bolt's not gonna come off. And that's what lock nuts are very good for. So we're gonna hold the lock nut. I don't have any little wrenches. And we're gonna tighten this. So I use lineman's pliers, which is what these are. I use these for just about everything. Uh, you can get these just about anywhere. Um, they're not too expensive. Uh, any brand will generally do. They're nice because you can just, you can get a strong hold on just about anything. Um, and uh, you know, it's like having 10 wrenches in your pocket. So now you can see that we have this great wheel here. So we can see that it spins like this, which is cool. And then it also rolls like this. So our wheel is gonna roll here. Now, how does this stay here? Well, that's where our suspension system comes in. And this is something that I kind of designed ad hoc after the fact. And you can see that it does look a bit silly. I was trying to find actual suspension to stick in there, but I kind of ran out of time. So the, in this case, we're gonna be actually making our own little 3D printed suspension, if you can see it here, and we're gonna stick it in there. And this isn't too flexible, but I might print this out of different material so that we can uh, actually go ahead and, and do that. Now, I forgot a thermal insert on the back of this wheel, so just bear with me while I, uh, while I stick that in. Okay, so now we have our little thermal insert in here. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to install our suspension system. And we want to install it so that we connect, this is our little spacer, let's get this belt out of here, and our spacer, my goodness, what a messy workspace. And our little spacer 
is going to sit here to elevate it above the belt, and then this is going to stick in. Then this is going to stick in here to hold it in place, and then we're also going to have a bolt that goes through here. So um, I'm going to go find those bolts, and then I'll be right back. All right. So luckily, I had the right bolts sitting around over there, which is really nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install our uh, little suspension. So now in this case, uh, we're going to be screwing into our thermal insert down here. And we're going to need a different Allen key. Guys, if you don't already have a set of nice metric Allen keys, I suggest you get them. They're, they're really, really handy. They're really nice. Um, okay, so we're going to screw that in. Now this doesn't have to be perfectly flexible. It doesn't have to rotate smoothly, but it has to rotate a little bit because it has to move with the actuation of the suspension. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stick a bolt uh, through here. Oh, that's a little tight. All right, guys. So while I assemble this, one of the questions that like I get a lot when showing systems like this is, uh, you know, like how good does your 3D printer have to be to build these things, to build, you know, the kits that I design? And um, to be honest, not that good. Uh, to, mine is very, very old. The one that I use for testing. I, I like to use a printer that you know kind of resembles what other people might have, and um, it uh, it's very old um, and and doesn't print too well anymore. Especially with PLA, the material goops out and there's strings everywhere. So this is printed at a pretty low quality and is something that a pretty low cost printer uh, is going to do. Um, so now you can see uh, we have our first half of the assembly. So we have a wheel here. We have a bit of a suspension system. It's not very springy. I'm going to have to make a new version of this. And that's nice and attached. And if I turn this belt, we can see that we have some nice wheel movement. And that's going to be attached to this motor here later. So now I'm going to assemble the other side in the same fashion. Okay guys, so here you can see that we have both our sides together. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like a rover. Maybe you guys can see it. I'm pretty surprised this went together as well as it did. Again, one of the reasons this is going together on the first try is because I did a lot of uh, modeling in CAD. And then the other thing that's very important is making tiny test prints. So for example, making sure this pulley's right, just print one little pulley or to make sure the bearing fits, just print a little tiny piece. One of the mistakes a lot of people make is that they'll go and to test a little feature, they'll print their entire thing and then realize a hole is too small or something like that. Um, and that's that's very wasteful. So it's very important that you, you try and check your designs um, as often as possible. Um, okay, so uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to assemble our next front wheel. Now this is where I may have to go through one or two tries because I'm not too sure how this is gonna work. Actually, I know how it's gonna work now. Okay, so here's our motor. And what you can see is on our motor, we have this, uh, timing pulley and it's a dual timing pulley so again once we have our timing belt on here we can move it like that so this needs to drive the front and the back wheel so we have our motion transfer system here but we also need a motion transfer system for the front and we're going to use the belt in the same fashion so this motor is going to get mounted in here like this let's get that out of the way and this belt is going to go onto the motor if everything fits together nicely oh, which it does and then this belt is also going to go onto the motor and it's going to go down to our front wheel. So um, similar, to the, similar to before, we have to make sure that we put this belt on first because we're never going to be able to put it on later. Then before we tighten the motor in, we're going to uh, make sure that everything's assembled together. So we're going to screw this here. Now I'm going to uh, install these screws. Now I'm just going to install these loosely uh, at first. I'm not going to tighten them all the way because we want a bit of tension on our belt. And if this thing's designed pretty well, quite often with timing belts, if you design everything correctly, you don't usually need a tensioner. A tensioner is helpful uh, and it can help you get more tooth engagement, um, but a tensioner is not necessarily uh, necessary all the time. And in this design, it's not necessary. So now what I can do is you can see that the belts are already pretty tight, but I'm going to use my hand and pull this this way. Now you can feel the belts a little tighter. And now I'm gonna tighten all the screws. So this is one way of, of tensioning a belt is by making your screw holes a little large and then moving the motor afterwards. 
Uh, and this is a, a pretty common technique. And you might even see this. Uh, if you have a 3D printer, you might see something like that on your 3D printer. So now, when I turn the motor or turn the motor on, we can see that we have our front wheel spinning. Very cool. So now what we need to do is we need to get the next wheel on here. Uh, or should I symbol? No. Next wheel on here. Let's do that. So I first need to go find those fasteners as usual. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our four screws, and uh, now we need to um, assemble this. So this bolts onto the bottom, um, and this is one place in the print that I did make a mistake. I moved one of the holes was here, and it should have been a bit further back, so I just drilled a hole in it. Uh, 3D printed materials, very easy to drill in safely. Um, so now what's going to happen is this wheel, or this belt is going to come down to this pulley. We're going to bolt it in, and then we have our entire motion chain. So, oops. So the first thing is I have to assemble this nicely. And then I put a screw in here. Oops, where's my allen key? This one. So sometimes what happened there, I was having a hard time assembling that. What can happen is you can get plastic in uh, the screws when you're 3D printing them. And that often uh, gets in the way uh, when you're trying to assemble it. Um, and it's, it's kind of annoying. So the one way to prevent that is to make sure that there's no plastic on the tip of your soldering iron when you're inserting it. And guys, one of the things that I want to be, you know, very clear on is that if you are doing this, um, you know, and you are, you know, younger, if you're, uh, you know, a child and you haven't had experience, um, you know, soldering things, you know, even if you're very capable at 3D printing, um, I would recommend that you uh, get someone to help you uh, when you are doing the thermal inserts, um, because uh, it can be a little bit dangerous uh, and you can burn yourself. So be very careful when you're doing that. All right, so now we can see the magic happening. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice right now is that I have a bit of belt slip. And what that means is that I need to tension this belt a little more. And in order to do that, I can rotate this, uh, or I can also print this longer. Um, now, right now, just for the sake of simplicity, hmm, it's not fantastic. It will work, but it won't work that well. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things that I have to edit in this design a little bit is I have to make this wheel come out a little bit. You might see it, it might be difficult to see on the camera, but this belt is on a bit of an angle. Uh, so something here, maybe this timing pulley is not pressed in all the way or something like that happened. Uh, but it's nothing that can't be, uh, can't be easily fixed. And this is still gonna work. It just would be nicer if it uh, you know, went all the way. Okay, so there is our uh, first assembly. And again, if I turn this, we can see that we get motion on all our wheels. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay guys, so I finished assembling that half. So now if we could take a look, we have two halves. So now you can see that we have something that's really starting to look like a rover. And I'm really sad that I didn't prepare to drive this thing in this video because this would look pretty cool. So what do we have to do now? Now we have to take these two halves and we have to stick them together. Now what you'll notice is at the back there's somewhere to join, but at the front there's nothing holding them together. And this is 3D printing, so this would just probably snap if I you know, try to get away with that. So how do we deal with that? Well, we're going to use a PCB, uh, which is the lighting system for this robot. We're gonna use that at the front of the robot. Um, so again, uh, bear with me, I've gotta go find some fasteners and I'll be right back. I'm gonna move some things around here. So this is our top plate. We're gonna need that in a second. These are our front pieces. This is our uh, front clip. And then this is the next thing we're gonna need. I'm gonna put that here. So 
Uh, for assembling this, we don't need to use lock nuts because we don't have the same amount of motion. So I'm just gonna use regular nuts. And the reason for that is that I'm probably gonna be disassembling this thing again when it comes to inserting the electronics into the device. So here goes our first bolting of it together. Now at this point, we have to be a little bit careful. Uh, you know, we could, we could break things if we're, uh, you know, too rough with the design while we're assembling it. The design's gonna be very strong once it's fully assembled, but right now it is, it is a little delicate. But now we need to constrain the front. So this thing, this is the LED panel that comes with the kit. Now what's the kit? I'll talk about that at the end of the video, okay? Um, so this is the LED panel and these are all RPG LEDs. So this is kind of like a really like low resolution TV screen and it gets really, really bright, but that's what we're putting at the front of the rover. And we can use that to uh, print messages or we can use it as a flashlight uh, to light up the camera. Oh, I said the camera. Um, or, or whatever you want. So this is gonna mount on the front here. So how we mount that is you'll notice we already have some screws, some screw holes that we already put in. Uh, so we're gonna insert the thermal inserts here. Now this PCB material, it's very strong. And that's uh, one of the great things about it is that it's made out of a uh, fiberglass. Uh, it's pretty thick um, and it holds, uh, it holds a lot of weight. So in this case, we can use it uh, as a structural component. Oops, my mistake. So, so far, I'm pretty happy that this design's gone together as well as it has. Sometimes this doesn't work out and I'd be, I was worried about this video because I was going to be drilling a bunch of holes and trying to figure out how to get everything to make together properly, but it seems like everything's working out okay so far, but nah, I probably, I probably just jinxed myself. We'll see. All right. So now you can see that we have a much more structurally stable Rover. And again, if I roll these wheels, you can see that the Rover moves forward and backwards. So now what I need to do is I need to assemble uh, the, the shell components. So that's all these things here. Let's just clean ourselves up a little bit here. I'm really bad at having a messy workspace all the time. So that's an extra bolt. Uh -oh. um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to assemble these panels. Now what goes on the inside of this rover? There's got to be more, right? There is. And I'm going to go into it in another video because I want to show you all the electronics on the table without all of these things connected. And that's gonna let you see how everything works together without having to worry about the mechanical things. So I'm gonna connect those things uh, together later uh, and do another video uh, that kind of demonstrates that and shows you how to move the motors, how to light up the panel, uh, and how this communicates with the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing that I'm going to assemble is I'll do the side panels first. So how are these made? So these are also 3D printed. Um, so I tried to make this design as minimal as possible use as little support whenever I could. Um, and these on the inside, you could probably multicolor. I just used some uh, some paint from the craft supply store and uh, painted the inside. I thought it looked kind of cool. Uh, it does look nice, but it's hard to paint on white. Uh, you know, if you've ever painted your house before or something, you might know that. Um, so these panels go here on the side and these are supported uh, with these screws. And there's two screws for the sides, uh, four screws for the top, and I think four screws for uh, the oh, why isn't this going in? There we go. Okay, I see a mistake already. Uh -oh. Maybe you guys can see it too with your top view. And the mistake is going to be on both sides. I'll show you after. Okay, that's that.
Let's check this. Okay, so what is the mistake on here? What's the mistake I made? And I think I'm gonna pay for it with this front clip as well. The mistake is these bolts. So these weren't supposed to be here. I forgot that there was supposed to be a thermal insert there. Uh, so what I'm gonna do before going on is I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna stick the thermal insert in, um, and then I'm gonna go and uh, correct, uh, the, I'm gonna correct the design. Uh, so bear with me while I do that. Uh, it's just a temporary fix. I'm gonna have to uh, change something later. Uh, so that was a bit of a, a bit of a mistake. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the front panel on. So you'll notice that uh, the front panel just has these two side bolts. Uh, that's all that's holding it on. And those are these bolts here. Uh, so this is gonna be nice. So this is the kind of stuff that's hard uh, to get right. And uh, the nice thing is that on this, it really worked out. Sometimes it doesn't. The reason being is that as you start to assemble 3D printed parts out, the error that comes from the 3D printing, which is, let's say this is supposed to be 43, millimeters long, but it only prints to 42. As that error adds, it shows up in other prints and it makes things hard to assemble. Now here we're lucky. Here we didn't have to, um, sorry, here we didn't run into any problems and things assembled okay. Uh, we might run into problems on the top, who knows? Uh, so I'm gonna stick in these little side bolts. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Pull that back. So this bolt's a bit tight and I, I expected. Oh yeah, you can hear it. Okay, I won't be able to put that all the way in. All right, so now we have the side panels and the top panel. One thing you wanna check is we're checking to make sure the wheels and the uh, belts aren't rubbing on anything. And they are rubbing a little bit on the side panels. Uh, but that's okay. That's something that we can fix later in the design. So now finally, we're gonna put the top on. Now, you're probably wondering, why is there a hole? Why is there this big hole, uh, you know, in the top of the design? Now I'm gonna show you guys another design in, a, in another video very soon, um, shortly after this. And it's the other version of this robot. We're not gonna do a whole assembly video, but I'm gonna show you guys the robot and walk through, uh, you know, how it works. But this is the hole for the LiDAR. Now there's two different versions of the top. There's one with the LiDAR and there's one without the LiDAR. And in this case, uh, this one has the LiDAR. Now what's LiDAR? Uh, LiDAR is a device that's used to map the environment around you. And we're gonna do a whole video explaining that and how LiDAR is used in robotics. So in this case, we're just gonna accept the fact that there's a giant hole in the top of this design uh, and just say that it's a window into the interior of the design um, and we're gonna assemble it. Uh, so this one is gonna have the LiDAR on it as well. Um, right now, uh, we only have one LiDAR here, so I'm going to have to take the LiDAR off the other design. That's okay. This bolt doesn't want to go in. Yeah, what you'll notice is I did get, I should have had a cleaner for the soldering iron. There's a bit of plastic on some of these inserts, so it makes it a bit tricky to uh, kind of assemble things. Now, like when you're building a house, when you put on the outside panels, it's the same with a car too. It adds a bit of strength uh, to your design, so your strength doesn't all, or the, the uh, the structure of your design doesn't have to be 100% in your frame. You can take some of it uh, and you can put it uh, onto uh, onto the top panels or onto onto any panels on the design. Uh, you know, like we did with the with the PCB on the front of the design. Okay, so here we have our finished rover. I haven't even seen this thing assembled yet. I'm very very excited. So I'm going to change the angle of the camera and then we're going to talk about this. Okay guys, so here it is. Here's our, this is our imaginary turntable. Here is our 3D printed rover. It looks pretty cool. I'm very happy with the design. I think it looks really neat. So uh, now that you guys have a better look at it, I'm gonna talk about, uh, oh, there we go. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how it works. So as I mentioned, when I designed this rover, I said, okay, you know, like I want something that's gonna go on the grass. I want something that's going to uh, you know, be able to move around uh, and use four-wheel drive. And the reason that four-wheel drive helps is because let's say that you're rolling over a rock and one wheel lifts off. It doesn't matter because you have other wheels that are still on the ground and these wheels, uh, you know, they drive you around and they let you move. So that's why I wanted to use four-wheel drive, especially for a rover design. Rovers like the Curiosity Mars rover, uh, that rover has, I think, six-wheel drive. So it's got a motor on every single wheel and it can control them all individually. Now, 
The problem is that our motors, I think I can grab one. Our motors are, are pretty large. So this is one of our motors. Now, if we wanted to stick this in the wheel, you can see that it's, it's pretty big and this would be pretty awkward to try and stick in there. So I wanted to try and create a system uh, that would allow us to put the motors in the body to keep the wheels uh, nice and small and away from the body and still give us four wheel drive. So to do that, uh, you can see that we use this belt system and this is what we assembled. So the motor's right here and then the motion transfers. So if I turn the motor here, uh, you're gonna see, oops, sorry guys, I'm still working on this camera thing. You can see that both wheels are spinning. Uh, now in the next video, I'm gonna show this all hooked up and all uh, running and working uh, with, uh, with the electronics. Um, so there you can see the belts on the front and then here's our suspension. So the idea with the suspension here uh, is that this suspension is supposed to take a bit of the spring. You can see it's a little bit springy, uh, but it could be better. Then if you look in the front, in here, we can see our LEDs. Uh, and these are what's gonna light up and they're gonna light up everything in front. They're very, very bright. I'm excited to show those off. And then you can also see our motors inside. Uh, and then this is the hole, again, for the LiDAR. I'm gonna explain what the LiDAR is. Uh, so guys, what is this about? Um, this is uh, about, a, it's a robot that I designed. I, I really like designing 3D printed robots. I think 3D printing is so cool. And I mean, look what, look what we can do with it. You know, this thing's almost entirely 3D printed. Um, there's a guy on Instagram who even, who even managed to print these belts. And belts are something that you've never been able to print before. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with 3D printing. So uh, I'm gonna be designing some more of these things and I'm gonna keep showing them to you guys. Um, so there's, there's two more coming. Uh, there's one that's already done and then another one that's kind of in the works. If you guys have any feedback about the designs or things you think that would be better, um, please let me know. One of the things that I do want to do with this robot is I want to make it all into a kit so that all the parts are together uh, so that it's really easy for people to find. A lot of these things like the bearings and the motors and stuff, they can be hard to find because they're all different sizes and same with the fasteners. Um, so I think it'll be a lot cheaper if I put it all together. Now, I'd like to launch that as a Kickstarter. If you guys think that's a good idea, if you think that I should, um, you know, like do this as a Kickstarter so that other people can have access to it, please uh, let me know, like make a comment in the video or, uh, or, or find me on Instagram. Um, so uh, yeah, the idea would be that this, uh, it, it has a Raspberry Pi in it and uh, you, you, would, uh, you would connect to it over Wi-Fi and you could control it to do all kinds of things. Um, so please guys uh, subscribe if you really like this video, stay tuned. Um, and I'm gonna keep showing stuff like this uh, and I'm gonna keep showing this robot, other robots. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for all the cool stuff.